are talking about how to write about painful emotions, difficult times in our lives, our stories, our wounded places in safe and effective ways. I'm so glad to be with you today. I am Grace Quantock. I am a writer and psychotherapeutic counsellor. You can find my work at gracequantock.com and I'm here today in my studio in South Wales. Uh, delighted to be speaking to you about some techniques and ideas you can use when writing about powerful material. So thank you for joining me for this exploration. This is powerful, potent and often tricky work, but I believe it's how we take care of ourselves as we do it that is so necessary for us to talk about today. So thank you for joining me. For more of this kind of work, please come to gracequantock.com and follow me at grace underscore quantock on Twitter. Thank you. Self can feel very therapeutic. Often if you write about episodes from your life and your personal experiences, whether that is fiction drawn from your life and, and ideas and thoughts and possibilities are reflected there, or whether it's creative non-fiction, uh, memoir, whatever it might be, uh, it can certainly feel very, very therapeutic to write about our experiences. We can get a sense that there's something processing there, that we're letting something out, working something out, getting it out, writing it down. And I acknowledge that writing can absolutely be therapeutic and, and there's still an and, which is that while we are doing something, we are also touching into things that can be very, very deep, that can be very, very powerful, and sometimes can overwhelm. So what I want to speak to you about today is just some really simple, safe ways to ha support ourselves when and if we choose to engage with these types of material in terms of our writing and our processing. So there is a difference, I believe, between journaling, writing, and therapy. Now, I'm a psychotherapeutic counsellor. I do work with trauma and with people with multiple marginalised identities. I love journaling. I'm never without my journal. And I teach uh, creative journaling. And I'm also a writer. So I really appreciate how these uh, different ways of working with words and story and ourselves and our past and our present and our future can all interweave and intersect and they can strengthen and draw from each other. However, I do still differentiate between them because for me, uh, journaling is something about, and this is just my own personal experience, yours may be different, uh, for me journaling is, is many things, but one of them is it's my connection, my container, my space of personal reflection and process, and it's something, a thread that really holds that as I go through my life and my day. Whereas therapy is, can absolutely be a holding in a container, but can also be a great deal of work and can be have challenge in it and can have holding in it and can have places where I'm working something out in relationship, in a therapeutic relationship with another person, with my therapist. And then writing may well draw on things in my life that I have discussed in therapy. It may mention things that I have journals about. I may actually go back to my journals and look at them as part of my writing process. But for me, writing is very distinct from journaling and distinct from therapy. Now, the how we write therapeutically or how we use such material in our writing as a craft question is a huge and beautiful question, but it is a separate question to what we're doing today um, just because of, of, of the, uh, the breadth of it. However, there are some fantastic courses writing about this, Alexander Chi, Tiki Ramadan, uh, Saeed Jones, Therese Mailot and other amazing authors have spoken and written about their experiences of writing uh, from trauma, with trauma, through trauma and trauma. And so I really recommend you check out those resources and, uh, you know, be part of the continuing conversation with your own experience. And, you know, when I come uh, to talk about that myself, if you join me in that, then we can go down that route there. But today, um, 
are talking about when we engage with material for whatever reason, in a journal, in a piece, how we do that safely. So when we're working in a trauma-informed way, it starts to have an understanding of what trauma is. Well, this is a contested subject and it can be very difficult to think about. Um, but for the purposes of today, what I'm thinking about is if you experience yourself as somebody who has survived trauma or you have a sense that there's something that's powerful or overly potent or quite deep in your past, that's what we're considering today. So when we're working in a trauma-informed way, one of the first things we can do before we actually start is look at anchoring. So what's anchoring? Anchoring is when we choose an anchor. This is an object, an item, a photograph. So for example, you might have a rock that you love, a necklace, a piece of jewellery you often wear, uh, a piece of clothing, um, it can be a favourite uh, book, a card somebody sent you, it can be a photograph on your phone or an album of photographs on your phone. Um, but whatever it is, it needs to be something which is uh, supportive, which reminds you of a space that feels safe and grounded, which reminds you of being in the present now. Um, and ideally not something that's contested. So kind of, you know, if you're picking, say, a picture of um, a, a, a loved one or a grandchild, but actually there's some family estrangement happening in that, you know, no, like it's, we want something that's just clearly and simply, <sighs> that feels good for me. So you pick your anchor and you might have it beside you. And if at any point uh, you start to become activated, which we're going to talk about next, uh, you might come, pause what you're doing and come and pay attention to your anchor. And just spend some time with it. Mm. Breathe with it, look at it, feel it notice it and as you do that just notice how it impacts you whether your level of activation starts to drop a little bit so to do that you need to know what activation is so what's activation in this instance by activation i mean when we're becoming activated or dysregulated by the material that you're working so that's going to look different for different people and there are different ways it can happen. But just to kind of give you the highlights today, what that might look like would be potentially your heart rate accelerating, your breathing shifting, you might feel yourself becoming hot, you might start to perspire, your thoughts might start to go a lot faster, you might start to lose some track of where you are or of when it is. You might feel very flooded by emotions or memories or feelings. Conversely, you may also, or instead of, become very still. You may uh, find your breathing gets very shallow. Uh, you may start to feel quite frozen, or like you can't continue, or that you're stuck somewhere. Um, you may find that you need suddenly, in the middle of a very emotional piece of writing, you just have to make that phone call or you just have to get a glass of water or you have to go to the loo or you have to research this thing that you just thought of right now. Now some people call the, the, the urge to move from that writing resistance and it can be potentially for some people but in this instance we're talking about trauma and we're recognising this in terms of the level of activation where potentially that could be your, you self-regulating. Part of your body saying oh this is too much this is beyond what I have the capacity to handle, it's going too far, we're going to do something else now, so I'm going to say I'm thirsty, I'm hungry, my head's uh, itching, I need to go and change my, my, my jumper because it's too hot, and it gets us away from the material, I'm focusing on something else, and just notice if that happens, when we are elsewhere, when either we've looked at our anchor object, or perhaps we're going to get a glass of water, um, what happens to our body and to our activation level. So are we now a little calmer, for example? 
Is the breathing a little deeper? Is the belly a little softer? Can we feel more of our body? Do we notice things around the room a little more? Do we just feel a little more in balance? So just noticing the activation level and just being able to work with it first to recognize it and it is not always easy. It is not necessarily easy to recognize any of these things. If it's tough for you, if you if you can't get the kind of sensation of it, that's okay. It is completely normal. You may want to explore that with your therapist or with another professional. You may find that as you have an awareness of it now, uh, you start to notice a little bit more, have more of a sensation, more of a, a visceral sense or something. But you also may not. And that doesn't mean you're wrong. It doesn't mean you're, you, you're not doing it right or not trying hard enough. It means that working with this stuff is deep and hard and complex and that being human is deep and hard and complex a huge amount of the time and we are just doing our best to get through it. So what we also touch on there is self-soothing. So this is the next point. So it can be really useful to realise what soothes us. So if we get activated, obviously using our anchor brings us back to this moment. But actually what we chose for our anchor can be a bit of a clue. Because what do we find soothing? If we choose for our anchor a piece of clothing, is it the colour of the clothing? Is it the texture? Is it the memory it evokes for us? Is it the workmanship on that? What might that be? So we might have a sense there of, whether we, of what we find soothing. Some people find it soothing to get a sense of their body in the moment. So if, like me, you're a wheelchair user, you might see if you can feel your seat on the wheelchair, kind of give a bit of a wiggle. If you have sensation in your bottom or your thighs or your legs or feet, you might see if you can get a sensation checking with them. You might feel the backrest of your chair. You might hold on to something that's nearby. You might touch a table or grip something and just feel your edges where you end and the, the object begins. So you start to feel your own container, where your edges are, what holds you, the limits of you that we exist in this body in this moment. For some of us, that can be too much. That can be too, touching into too much body stuff and it's not a good idea and that's a thousand percent valid and okay. Your responses are valid and okay. So you may notice then, what do you tend to do to soothe yourself if you get upset? Do you connect with somebody? Speak to another human? Call a friend? Text somebody? Do you look at images you like? Do you read a book you like? Do you spend time with uh, outside or taking a breath? Do you have a snack? Just noticing whatever it is you do to self-soothe. And then choosing the options within that realm that fit you best in this moment and are most accessible because we can all have very aspirational self-soothing ideas. We can say, gosh, you know, I wish that, that I like to do three hours of meditation to soothe me. And hey, if you do, that's fantastic. I'd love you to teach me. That's great. In my experience, self-soothing in meditation comes after a long time of practicing meditation, when part of it is, is our practice that we're now sitting with. Absolutely not discouraging meditation whatsoever. It can be wonderful and fantastic. Uh, but just noticing that, you know, if your self-soothing is watching Netflix uh, and lying on the couch, then, you know, more power to you. It's whatever is useful and best and most accessible to you in this moment. You may find, for example, that going swimming is soothing for you. That tends to really soothe you. That's not always going to be accessible, perhaps. So you may try having a shower, having a bath, putting your hat, running your hands under, under the tap, uh, washing your face and kind of playing in the water a little bit. So, you know, whatever it is, we're finding the bit that works for you. So, now the last thing we're going to talk about in terms of these uh, ways to manage is the doorways. So now we're talking about the thresholds. These are the thresholds into the material and out of the material. So what do you do to repair yourself to go into this work? Because quite often, when, when something's kind of bubbling in us, we just tip into it. 
and everything just comes out and we actually haven't chosen what's coming out we've just fallen over somewhat of a cliff emotionally and everything comes out and it's about the dog and what your father said and how they fired you and, and what happened on that on the road that time under the bridge and how hard it was and how you have been able to and it's everything now that can happen sometimes and it's going to happen sometimes but it's a lot it's a lot for you it's a lot for your body I believe it's a lot for us to ask any kind of part of our writing to condemn, for example. So, you know, sometimes it's noticing the thresholds. So we might notice, hey, I have a persistent thought or I have a theme that's kind of been, been with me for a while, that's kind of been uh, floating about. You know, I really feel like I, I want to write about this. There's something here. So you may then make a note of it. And when you come to write, you may set yourself up in, in a, a, a safer space as possible and you may not always do this but if it's powerful material you may want to and you may take some steps to get yourself ready so you may have an anchor nearby you might have some water for self-soothing um, you might put a timer on so you write for a specific amount of time and then you pause and just check in with yourself how are you doing and then you might you know look at your list and say what what do I want to to write about at the moment? And you might be able to pick out one thread and just say, this is the one I want to write about today. And all the others might clamour and, and that's okay. And you can hear them and see them. And some days you're not going to be able to tease out the one you want and you're just going to end up with a, everything tangled and you might become quite dysregulated from it. It might be kind of tough. And some days you might be able to pull out one thing and so you know I'm gonna step into so thank you for joining me for this exploration this is powerful potent and often tricky work but I believe it's how we take care of ourselves as we do it that is so necessary for us to talk about today so thank you for joining me for more of this kind of work please come to gracequantuk.com and follow me at grace underscore quantock on Twitter. Thank you.